I just filmed this entire thing with the microphone muted. Let's run it again. This is the OCG Dark Magician top list that made top three to locals, which I've edited to make it more Loza. So what we'll start with is the things we've changed. We're not going to talk about the things we didn't change because obviously they're just good. So we took out the two DD Crows and added in the Bestial Magna Hut or Pizza Hut. And we added in a Druus Worm because these cards are just cracked, quite frankly. You could also play a Saraneer and I'm thinking about putting one in right now instead of this Chronicle Magician. And you know what? I think I just convinced myself. There we go. <laughs> just to have one of each of them, meaning we have three different DD Crows. But it also means we're able to search dragons off the Pizza Hut effect. Pizza Hut can add to Myus, or it can add any of the other two. And that's pretty nifty if I do say so myself. Now in terms of rank 7 stuff, we've got the Vishooters. Um, these unfortunately are level 6s. If they were 7s, oh my god, how crazy would they be in DM? But they are sixes, which is still very, very good. Unfortunately, we can't really play Narito because Narito says two level six spell casters. Instead of playing Narito, we can always play Wallow, founder of the Drudge Dragons. The reason why it's so good is it's just two level sixes, so you can make it with either Magician Soul Summoning DMG, you can make it with Apprentice Illusion, or you can make it with the Bestials themselves. Two level sixes, monsters you can draw gain attack for each card in your opponent's graveyard. Quick effect, target a card in your opponent's grave. Detach two materials from this card, one or two materials, sorry, and then activate the effect. One, return that card to the deck, so it's another DD Crow almost. Two, that targets a monster, special it face up or face down to your field, if not set it to your field. How crazy is that? You can just take something of your opponent's, say thanks, that's mine, and use it, or just put it back in the deck. So, your two DD Crow monsters, your literal bestials, DD Crows with stats, you can summon them out by banishing two of your opponent's grave like effects and monsters. Then you can just go into this and rip another card from their grave or just set it to your field. So this card's kind of insane and the fact that I didn't have it in the build till right now is a hate crime. But we've got it in there now, you love to see it. Hey you, yeah you, you've been wondering where I get my singles from. Well it brings me great joy to say I get my singles from Grimdark Gaming. Whether you play Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, Dragon Ball, Flesh and Blood, Magic the Gathering, Meta Zoo, or whatever it is you're after, make sure with your purchase to use code LOZA2 and apply that to get 5% off your order. And of course, that 5% goes to helping me out to make this channel so awesome for you. So make sure you check out Grimdark Gaming down in the description of this video and use the promo code LOZA2. We are gonna have to cut something and you know what? I really don't think Anaconda does a lot in this build. I could, you could probably make an argument to cut Link Karibo, like there's not really a purpose for Link Karibo here. So I'm probably gonna go with that, but Anaconda still can send fusion deployment. So we'll get into that. Now the original build played 2 Fusion Deployment because it had the cool guy, Magnum the Reliever. Magnum the Reliever made Fusion Deployment good in the build because you could banish Fusion Deployment or any card that lists Fusion or Poly or something, and you're able to pop a card, quick effect pop a card on the opponent's field. Uh, so that's really good with Circle, having like an off turn pop, off turn banish, super nice, right? The unfortunate factor is, if you Fusion Deployment out DM or DMG, what do you do from there? <laughs> You're stuck because Magnum Reliever requires an extra deck monster to be made with. So you can't just link that DM away for I'm Duck and then secrets into it, right? You need to have some crazy setup where you have Magician Souls. You summon Magician Souls, you send the fusion deployment for draws, and then you suddenly have secrets and DM or DMG in here, and you secrets, oh sorry, link away the Magician Souls for any link ones like Anima or Link Karibo, and then you secrets into Magnum the Reliever. So that's just so much effort for pretty little payoff if you do. That's just so much effort for like such a little payoff in my opinion. So I don't know. I'm starting to think that card isn't the reason that list won. And I do think Guardian Chimera might have had more to do with it. Now Guardian Chimera I've barely talked about. I may have mentioned it one or twice on the channel, but this is a card I should talk about a lot more. This card makes going second with DM very interesting. If you open Rod and Secrets, you can do a lot of things here. You can normal the Rod and bait in a response from the opponent, and if they go for an Imperm Valor or even just any other negation, you can chain the Secrets, hopefully, if you have the material around to do it. So you do need one DM or DMG in the hand, which I missed. But yes, yeah, Secrets has to use DM or DMG, unfortunately. But fuse away that Rod with the Secrets and the DMG or the DM, into the Guardian Chimera and a third card in the hand, just anything else in the hand. From there, you're able to get 
are two pops and two draws. So that's insane, right? But to go with that, if your Rod did get Impermed or Veilored, you are now dodging that effect because Rod only gets negated if it stays on the field from Imperm or Veilor's negation. So if Rod leaves the field, they can't actually target, or they can't resolve their effect properly to negate its search. So you can actually go big plus here, almost, um, thanks to Guardian Chimera drawing and popping, mind you, to help clear the space, the board for you, you also get the rod search off at the end there. So it's actually kind of insane. I've been doing that in ranked a fair bit. So I thought, why not talk about Guardian Chimera? Another good use for Guardian Chimera is just going first, setting that secrets, and on the opponent's turn when they start to play a bit, and you've done your Eternal Soul banish uh, with Circle, you know, banish one of your opponent's cards, but they keep extending. You can just go, all right, flip the secrets, fuse away into Chimera. You normally will only pop one here with the off turn secrets, but that's okay. Uh, it's still very good, and most decks can't play through the one banish and the one pop, and if they can, well you better hope you got your, your <laughs> Ash Blossom, your Maxi, your Judgment, your Imperm, or your Skill Drain. So let's talk about these weird ratios. Obviously Skill Drain's at 1, and it's great, so we play it. Um, judgment and Imperm at 1. Super weird, but the OCG list was playing them like this, and I think it's kind of cute. So it's kind of like a toolbox of effect negation or negation summons. But obviously, if you open Skill Drain and Imperm, that sucks, because they're kind of going to do the same thing. And then if you open Judgment with this and this, it's fine. So it's it's just like, instead of playing heaps of Imperms and heaps of Skill Drains and them not really working with each other, this works with both. This can work with both. And I don't know. It's just good to have one extra hand trap there as well. So we've got the Triple Maxi, the Triple Ash, the one Imperm, but then the three Bestials as well. That gives us... What, 10 cards? 10 cards for going second is pretty good for DM. We normally don't have that many, so I do like that. Not to mention the Eva Shooter makes playing second nice. What else did we say made playing second nice? Secrets with Chimera is very nice. And uh, that's probably about it, but that's honestly more than most DM lists play for going second. In terms of other ratios, I've actually kept the circle at three, which is unusual for me, but I'm really enjoying it in this list. So we're playing triple circle and Soul Servant here is at three which it was at two in that list and secrets was at two in that list so i've swapped that ratio we've gone three soul servant one secrets because you can recycle the secrets using the soul servant it just it makes more sense to me and i'm pretty sure everyone would agree soul servant's the best spell in dm you want to max out on it so here we are maxing out on it um, in terms of other cards I've added, Preparation of Rites, just at one because I had the room, I thought, why not add a Preparation of Rites, because it does add our Ritual Guy, and it means we're playing three copies without playing three copies. Um, you could play more preps here, but I did opt for the Hand Traps. I love the Hand Traps. They do do a really good job of just helping us play second, and just not, you know, pass on Eternal Soul and Circle, and that's it, right? Gives us an additional interruption, which hopefully can seal the deal. Now, XZs here are pretty good. We got one for six, one for seven, and then the Zeus package. You love to see it. Link ones are our specialty here. So we've got the I'm Duck, the Anima. Remember, I'm Duck's mainly for looping DM. Animas to make Magician Souls more threatening going second. We've got Monk here to make the uh, the Vishuda leave the field for us if we need it. You normally don't need this, but it's there just in case. Artemis, once again, kind of there just in case Rod can't find a way to get off the field. Uh, you link it away, and then you're able to do Rod effects in the grave on the opponent's turn to recycle it. It's very nifty. Yeah, it's Anaconda is not banned, so we're gonna play it because it can send that one copy of Fusion Deployment. Another reason why we're playing Fusion Deployment at one. So one, we don't have uh, the big boy. I've already forgotten his name once again, Mr. Crusader himself. But we also have Anaconda here, so we can actually afford to play Fusion Deployment just at one, and I think it works just fine. We've got the Dark Selene Access Code package, which I think every DM list should play, and we've got the three DM uh, Fusion monsters that I think every DM list should play. One Dragon Knight because we're actually really good at summoning it in this build. I wish these guys were dragons as well, but whatever. Um, one Dark Magicians, because it comes in clutch for OTKs. And sometimes it's all you can make turn one, and it feels kind of bad, but that's all you can do. And also Master of Chaos, which is better going second, but it um, it does not come up often. It, it's a bit niche, but I figure you may as well have it, because those hands where you open Rod and Illusion of Chaos, or Souls and Illusion of Chaos, and you're going second, you can actually go into this and wipe the field, or just OTK the opponent. And sometimes it's pretty good. Not all the time. So you'll notice all these fusions are at one because you, normally after you've summoned one, you don't need to summon anymore. One card I'm actually really keen to put in this list is Monster Reborn. You might be thinking, why Monster Reborn? Well, we're able to summon a plethora of great fusion monsters. And if you can bring any of these guys back, like you will have a pretty good time here. Not to mention, if you do find a way to summon Illusion of Chaos properly and he does go to the graveyard for whatever reason, bringing him, bringing him back is really good. 
bringing back any of the bestials is really good. Hell, even just Circle and Monster Reborn can revive DM and get a Banish, which is nice. There's just so many instances where you can reborn something in your opponent's grave, and that will bait a response as well, so that's really good too. And it's kind of like playing another bestial at that point, right? So reborn almost becomes a DD Crow on your turn. So I really like that about it. I don't think I can quite fit the reborn in, so I'm just not going to play it for now, but if you make room for it, let me know and tell me what you can't. Alright, we're trying the deck out in ranked. <laughs> what a hand we've been given. No circle. So, yeah, we can summon DM off turn, but it doesn't do anything. Looks like the opponent has Maxi as well, so let's see if they're going to activate it on this Salvation like most Master Duel players will in the Silver rank. But it looks like they're not going to activate anything, which is actually surprising. I don't think we set anything else. We could always set a Maxi, but I don't know. I'm just going to set a Maxi. That's probably incorrect. But man, do we have nothing going on here. Maxi being a level 2 socks. Imagine if it was at least level 1, you could like make Link Karibu or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe setting this Maxi is going to come back and bite us. Because uh, they're going to have the Ash for it. And then we're going to wish we had another one for the turn after. But we could just lose right here. Blue Eyes Alternative. Well, at least we're going to be having a Blue Eyes um, vs. Dark Magician kind of video going on here. I do love to see that. Unfortunately, you cannot respond to the summon of Blue Eyes Alternate White Dragon. It doesn't activate. It just happens. Uh, that is really unfortunate because I don't think DM's got anything similar to that. And that's really sick. Magician Souls, of course, activates in the hand, and we hate to see that. I don't think he's going to summon anymore, so I'm just not going to flip the Max C yet. And he probably knows I have one now, because he destroyed one. Um, he's going to be setting three in Blue Eyes, which is pretty weird. Not quite sure where this is going. To the end phase, well, okay then. Let's flip Eternal Soul. This, of course, will let us summon out this beautiful boy in our hand, which doesn't look like it'll do a lot. But we'll actually be able to make a uh, Link 2 with this. Which also doesn't seem like it will do much at all. Because we can't go into Dark. There's only one spell on the field. And there's nothing for Selene. And for Dark, there's nothing in the grave. That's a pretty good top deck though. So that is going to help us to play. Just curious what he's going to flip here. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Let's go and activate Soul Servant. We're going to go get Illusion of Chaos. So the reason you always want to add... <coughs> I'm going to banish and draw that Illusion of Chaos we just stacked. And the reason you always want to add Illusion of Chaos is because you can keep it in your hand. And for every turn after this one, if you survive, you are able to search our Dark Magician card. And who doesn't love to do that? So let's go ahead and add our um, Magician's Rod. Now we're going to put that Eternal Soul back because it's... It's pretty useless right now, huh? Let's normal the rod, and we might be met with some effect negation here, which would not be surprising considering there's three back row. Something's gotta flip up at some point. But so far, nothing, so let's go ahead and grab circle. Secrets would be cool, but it's a bit riskier. I'd rather have the everlasting effect of circle where we can just keep generating that banish every turn. That seems a lot better. No response once again. Really curious as to what this back row is. And there you go. There you have it. We're going to find the secrets off that anyway, which is absolutely huge. Um, let's go ahead and put the Magician Souls back on top of the deck there. So we're going to have some plays from here. Let's go ahead and make Dark the Dark Charmer. I don't think that'll threaten anything from the opponent. And Dark's probably not what I want to be making here. I was probably better off making I'm Dark. No, I was better off making I'm Dark. Summoning back DM, secrets into Dark Magician the Dragonite, so definitely a misplay there on my behalf. But that's alright, let's keep moving on. I'm just going to have to make an OTK play here instead, which I think is doable. I think we ignore the back row here. The back row keeps just not triggering, and to me that screams that it's not real. I, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but that's how I feel about it. And there you go, that back row seems to be bricks or bluffs, I, I don't know. But let's go find out what it is. Nothing. This is bizarre. What Blue Eyes deck plays back row, let alone doesn't activate it. Now I can secrets here, but it doesn't actually give me game. Oh, I lied. It does. Because we have Illusion of Chaos in hand. Illusion of Chaos is a good guy. Now if I played into an Imperm column here, that's on me. We can make Guardian Chimera here, but we're not going to. 
And I mentioned keeping that Illusion of Chaos for future turns for draws, and then I immediately fused with it, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, just don't listen to me ever, I guess, is the takeaway from this video. This will give us enough damage for game, though, so we'll just see what our opponent does here. Surely they have to have some sort of interruption, and if they do destroy the Master of Chaos here, we do get a draw, but it looks like there's no response, which is pretty weird. Oh, now there is a response. Okay, they're playing these cards. That's weird. The crystal avatars and whatnot. The trap monsters. I believe these were used in the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, Dark Side of the Dimension. I think. I think that's where this one's from. I could be wrong. It has attack equal to your LP, and then I attack it. What? Don't you just still lose? Well, that was weird, but, um, the deck did well <laughs> against whatever that was. I'm always curious about my opponent's deck, so what would the back row have been? A true light? No, but they would have used it. Crystal Avatar? What? what? Why were none of these cards used? I... Maybe it was Ultimate Fusion. Why is he playing this? Oh, because of the Cypher XYZ. Well, I'm gonna guess it was just all this garbage. Man, this build is super bricky. Holy crap. How is he not playing Melody of the Awakening Drag? Swords of Revealing Light. All right, it's an anime list. You can't fault someone on the anime list. Anyway, that's the list. I really am enjoying Pure DM. There's Bistils in there, but it's still necessarily Pure DM. They're just hand traps, right? So anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know what your builds are looking like and what you would change from the OCG build or my build. Just let me know. Let me let me have it. Let me have the roasting. Anyway, I'll see you guys very soon.